Hey, everybody. My name is Via Williams, and I am with Ben Kinney Agent Training, and we are here on Wednesday, like we are every Wednesday at noon Pacific time. And, and today's topic is one that came from you. It came from you from one of our recent uh, Wednesday webinars, we call them, uh, when one of our particular agents, uh, it was Catherine Rain, I believe, was talking about working with virtual assistants. And I've worked with virtual assistants for eight or nine years, and the chat started flowing and everyone was like, you should do a webinar on virtual assistants. So uh, that is exactly what we're doing. We are doing a webinar today on everything working with offshore, in this case, virtual assistants. So uh, I've got an all-star panel. I always have all-star panels. I, I don't know how I am so blessed to have all-star panels, but I really, really have one today. We have Bryce Waldron and Bryce Waldron leads Brivity Virtual Assistance. We call it Brivity VA. Uh, Bryce, how are you? And how many? I'm doing good. How many? Good. How many VAs do you do you have uh, in the program? Uh, we have a, between 300 and 400 currently. Cool. That's mm -hmm. pretty big, my friend. It's pretty yeah, awesome. Yeah, it's getting big. It's getting crazy. Yeah. Well, we've also got um, Stephanie Prettyman and Stephanie, you're in Princeton, New Jersey. You are a complete and utter rock star. Uh, I, I think that, you know, what I'm excited about is you've worked with VAs for a really long time. You've got a really, really good book of business. You, you're really good with systems and you were the first person, um, Bryce and I both were like, Stephanie, like Stephanie has to be the agent that talks about this. So thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to, to join us today. We appreciate yeah. it. Thank you, Via, for having me. I'm excited to help everybody learn a little bit more about VAs. So thank you again for having me on. Yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait. And last and certainly not least, we have Christy Destura. Did I pronounce that right, Christy? Yes, that was perfect. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and you are joining us live from the Philippines. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Uh, 5 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So, or not, um, you're, you're what we call our, our, our client success coach trainer. Um, the translation of that is you manage 50 virtual assistants and their clients for Brivity right. VA. So you have a really big job. Yes. Yes. It, it's a tough job, but I love it. <laughs> That's great. Well, we're really happy to have your input, you know, um, and I know that you were a VA before this role, correct? Yes, that's right. Actually, I worked with Stephanie before uh, for, for a year. So def definitely I'll share everything about virtual assistants. <laughs> that's perfect. That's perfect. Well, today, you know, the, the format and the framework and anyone who, who, who's on these a lot knows that I love my frameworks. The framework is really easy. We're going to talk about who should get a VA, what you should have a VA do, how you should work with a VA, which I can't wait to dive in. Stephanie has got some really cool things there and just kind of, you know, mistakes, you know, I think that that's always good to talk about. Like, you know, we've all lived through major mistakes and we can teach everybody from our mistakes and maybe alleviate some stress that others might have. Right. So Bryce, I think we should start with you because you run this, you know, really large VA organization, right? Sure. And, mm -hmm. and my question is like, who's a good candidate? Who mm -hmm. should hire a VA? Yeah, that is a good question. Um, we spend yeah, every day we meet with and, and we will consult with real estate agents. And sometimes we say you should definitely get started with a VA. And sometimes we say you should probably hold off. Um, and every business is, is a little bit different, but, but most everyone... Uh, most real estate agent teams are, are kind of the same, right? And in our opinion, we think that agents really need to, um, they, they kind of have to like, they, this is not something that they do for luxury, right? This is something that you do for leverage. And there's a difference between leverage and luxury. And every agent and team needs to think about how, if I could offload a bunch of work off my plate, right? What am I going to fill that with? And is that going to increase the revenue of my business? Is it going to increase the health of my life? Is it going to increase the health of my employees? Is it going to increase my bottom line, right? Like, what are you replacing it with? And if teams are in a place where they have work or they have things that they can leverage out and increase the quality of their life, improve it or increase their business, that's number one, the, a right candidate for a VA. And, you know, a VA really is just a remote employee, 
right? It's no different than having someone in-house. So a lot of the people who would qualify to um, hire an admin internally, the same people who are going to qualify to hire a virtual assistant just happens to be remote, more affordable, um, and have uh, some other different nuances. But th- does that make sense? Hopefully I answered that question. Yeah, it totally makes sense. It, you know, I, I I think the elephant under the carpet or the elephant in the room, elephant in the room, is that the expression? <laughs> elephant under the carpet is not the expression. That's elephant not the expression. The room, yeah. <laughs> no, elephant in the room. Okay, there you go. Perfect, oh, let yeah. me get my cliches right. The <laughs> elephant in the room is is that it's more cost effective to hire a VA, right? Is is it, are you comfortable kind of sharing ranges and maybe, you know, what it, if a typical assistant's going to be anywhere from, I don't even know, 36K to 75K a year, depending on your market and scope yeah. of activity, how, how much might a VA be? Well, it really depends on how you go about it, right? You can go and um, list ads yourself in the Philippines and hire somebody for a very affordable rate under eight hours, under $8 an hour, for example, just doing it yourself. You can go pay for uh, any services out there that do a lot for you and helping make the successful and carry a lot of the, the risk there. And that's probably going to be anywhere between a thousand and two thousand dollars a month, depending on what service you use, right? So there's a couple of ways to go about it: hiring directly or using a service. But typically, it's about seventy percent cheaper than um, than than bringing on an admin internally, right? Um, that's not the primary reason we want people using a VA is just to be ch- do things in a cheap way, right? Um, we want there to be value and other reasons outside that. But it, yeah, if you're budget conscious or if you're a small team. Um, and, or you want to keep your fixed cost control, this is a really, really great way to, to go about that. Yeah. Well, it, so you say it's not the primary reason. What is the primary reason to hire a VA then? Well, I think it's leverage. I think it's increasing your hourly rate. You know, when we think about well, what is your goal as an agent? I just, I, I talk to people so much every day about how burnt out they are, about how they're doing too much um, and how they don't know how to escape that. Right. And th- th- we could help with that. You know, VAs can help with that. Admin can help with that. Right. And I think that's the primary reason is, are you going to be able to increase your hourly rate? Are you going to be able to do more with your business, help more people get into homes, get more listings? Right. Are you going to be, or on the inverse of that is, are you going to be able to spend less time in your business? Are you going to be able to spend more time with your family or doing the things that you love? Right. Are you going to be able to be healthier? And those are the kind of the primary reasons that I think people should look into using a VA. That's perfect. That's great. Yeah. Um, do you think, uh, and, and again, we're still on the who and, and we'll move on. I promise. I promise everybody will move on, but I'm curious. Do you think an agent should hire a VA or do you think the agent's EA, their assistant is a better candidate to hire and, and manage a VA based on your experience? Uh, an agent, should the agent be directly responsible for the VA yeah. or their executive And Stephanie, system? I'd love to get your feedback on that too, because yeah. I have I have my thoughts on that. But. Well, I, if I were thinking true leverage, I would want to see, I want to see the team, the agent leverage out their EA to take point on managing the VA for sure. That's true leverage, right? Um, but I think that the agent should always be connected to that person, right? You know, getting to know the person two degrees of separation uh, away from you and your business is really important. So if something happens or you lose your EA, that connection, that relationship still exists. I think that's really wise, but I would totally, if I had an EA, I'd say, yeah, go start the search, go hunt, go pick a service, um, bring me people that you really think would work good with you. And then, then we'll talk further about those folks. I think that's how I would do it. Yeah, do you have any thoughts? I do. I have a few thoughts when we're talking about the who. Um, so, well, number one, Bryce, I definitely agree that the lead agent should have initial primary communication with the VA. That person is working on your behalf. I now have gotten an EA who I've leveraged um, some tasks on with the VA, but at the end of the day, the communication is still between us. Um, When you're focusing on if you are a team or you are an agent who does have an EA, definitely group chat is the way to go. Either if you use Slack or Google, Google chat, whichever you use. But when we're talking about the who, and you know who is going to need a VA? Why get a VA? And we're looking at com- cost implications that you've mentioned. In my, prof- in my personal opinion, and from myself, is a VA is probably one of the biggest life-changing things for myself in the business. Um, I mentioned, you know, when I previously, I've always worked a full-time job. A lot of single agents, a lot of agents themselves are fearful when you're 
getting rid of that stable income. Mm -hmm. And you think it's different where it's, okay, you're getting rid of stable income to pay somebody else stable income to build this leverage. But what that actually ended up for me is it built my business. And having the VA leveraging off things such as marketing is a huge thing. I'm not a good person with social media. I will tell you, even though I'm young, I get that all the time. I don't really know how to use my cell phone, but helping with social media, helping create a brand. When you are a realtor, the first thing is you want to create who you are. Mm -hmm. VAs, they're helpful, help helping you create that. The cost to have somebody to do marketing, um, the cost of having a transaction coordinator, a lot of offices have a $300 contract to close. If you're looking at all these different costs as a realtor that you're spending in your overall budget, for myself, I found that having that VA was more cost effective. And I use Brivity VA is the best system and resource that I found for VAs. And overall, their management for what they do for their VAs, the back end training and accountability, I have not found another service that you can get that from. So when we're talking about leveraging a VA, we're also talking about what company that is. And I have found the resources from Brivity VA have been just the best in terms of that overall leverage and accountability. You know, it's funny you should say that because, and then Christy, I do want to, I want to ask you a follow-up question. One of our agents, Aaron Thomas, is using a VA full-time to do video editing. I know a couple. I, I know like two or three agents now that's a trend where, you know, they're either fixing cameras on themselves and they're pressing record whenever they're doing content. Like I could have one on me now, right? And then they ship it off and then the VA is kind of, you know, splicing and dicing and, and editing for content, like chunking it up for Instagram and for Facebook chunks and for YouTube chunks. Um, are you seeing more and more of that, Bryce? Yeah. Yeah. We have a, a lot of people who come in and want, you know, social media management, number one, is huge and driving content is really, is, is, mm. is massive for real estate agents. So and if there's really like admin focused things like transcribing video or converting audio yeah. into written so they can blog, you know, there's okay. some good books out there that talk about how to convert a video into written or, or sorry, video into audio to written and then blasting it on all these other sites that in that format, the VAs can definitely do that. There, there's we'll a little a bit about marketing that I would caution against with the VA, which I don't know if I want to get into the specifics, but you know, um, marketing, someone creating marketing material that doesn't know your area, that doesn't know the street names, that don't know your people, that don't know your customers, right? That There's always a little bit of a disconnect that you need to be aware of, but if it's structured well, they've got, you know, and, and you have good systems for it in place in your team, I think you can be leverage, leveraged out really successfully. Yeah. Let, and we'll go into that um, right now. I kind of want to go through the four buckets we talked about before we do, if it's okay, I just, yeah. just wrapping up the who Christy, I'm curious. And, and I want you to tell me the truth. Tell me the mm -hmm. promise, promise me. You'll tell me the truth. Um, <laughs> is it easier for you and your VAs to work directly with an EA or with the actual agent rainmaker? Um, I would say that I prefer my VAs to work directly with the agents. Yeah. And okay. the reason I did not that... expect you to say that. I did not expect that. <laughs> well, the reason behind it is because um I'm into building relationships as well with the clients, right? And I think um a VA is going to be very effective with their job if they have they have built this certain relationship with the agent. And um there are a lot of miscommunication if, you know, if there's a middleman, should I say? And um, it, it's really better if it's the rainmaker itself who's, you know, guiding the VA and all that. And then probably um, in the, as soon as they built this certain uh, relationship already, that's the time that an EA can come in. Again, I'm not saying that it's, it's really a bad idea, but I think building relationship initially is the best way on how to go about, you know, the VA and the client relationship. Okay. All right. I, I stand corrected because maybe it's just because <laughs> I am not very operationally minded and, you know, maybe it's because I always had a director of operations who's truly in my particular case, way better at working with the VA than me. <laughs> so I, I'm just bringing my own stuff to the table because I, you would not have wanted to work with me. You really uh -huh. would want to work with my director of operations. Well, you're not alone with that VA. You know what? Uh, 
probably, oh, so, yeah, or maybe half, maybe more of our customers that we have, it's not the direct agent. It really depends on team size. If you're a big enough team yeah. where you need an EA and you need a VA, it's likely that that VA is going to be working with the EA. But if you're smaller and you're and, and scrappy and just getting started, yeah. the VA typically works with the agent. So it kind of follows team size, but I've seen it successful on both sides. That's for sure. Yeah, it's a case to case scenario. For sure. For sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you for, you know, I kind of put you on the spot there, there, Christy. <laughs> no um, all right. So, so that was really good. That's exactly what I wanted. You know, who, who should hire a VA? Cause I think that, you know, there are people wondering like, well, do I just, you know, start ponying up? Do I, do I, you know, spend 50 grand a year and get the assistant and then worry about a VA second, or do I start into this whole leverage journey with the VA? And by the way, there's probably no right answer or wrong answer, you know, for, yeah. for everybody here. Um, Bryce, let's walk yeah. into what typically VAs do. Sure. Uh, yeah, we here at Brevity VA, we've, we've grouped um, because we met with so many, we have so many customers, it's easy to kind of look at a, a big picture and see where do all the VA's roles kind of fit into. And they typically fit in, or they always fit into one of these four areas. Um, and there's some nuances and there's some specifics and there's some mixing, right? Um, but typically a VA uh, works in one of these four areas. The first one is, is this marketing role that we've talked about, right? Um, and this could be anything from social media management to uh, marketing the listings on you know, your marketing sites to generating actual content and creative work for the real estate team. Um, flyers included, you know, postcards, all that jazz. So marketing is one bucket. Another one that's really, really common that I really like is transaction coordination or listing coordination. You know, anything in the TCLC space, um, teams are leveraging out everything from contract to close uh, out to a virtual system. The awesome thing about that via is most teams or a lot of teams pay for, per transaction to get their files processed, right? Eventually when you get bigger, it doesn't make sense. You have to fix your costs as a business. Otherwise your business grows, but nothing actually grows. It just grows on paper, but your business doesn't actually grow in your life. It doesn't make you any more money. You can't hire anybody more because as your revenue increases, so do your expenses. If to cap your costs at some um, at some uh, at, um, a level, right? And a good way to do that in the TC space is bring that in-house. And if you do it with a listing coordinator from the Philippines or a VA, right? Then um, that's a really affordable way to do that. So marketing, TC or, or, or transaction work. Another one is ISA or, or a sales role. This is, I think one half of our customers all use v VAs as an ISA or an OSA. These folks are outbound calling, they're circle prospecting, they're calling past, they're calling expireds, right? Fizbos. Um, they're calling uh, into a database and nurturing for a long time and setting appointments for their client. They're also managing that database, leveraging the systems the agents use to generate more business. Like in Brivity, we have auto plans or market reports, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and the last bucket is kind of a catch-all. It's kind of an executive assistant general admin. I literally have clients who are have their VA reminding them to take their medication on time, uh, all the way down to ordering their groceries. Um, off Costco.com for them to pick up because that's the leverage yes, that they please. need in their life. Yes, right? please. Like, yes, if, yes. Yeah, if, if you could do it, what? What? <laughs> if you could do it on a computer, you can get someone remotely to do it, right? And and you don't True. have to leverage out the things in your business for a virtual assistant. If you have an EA or someone really responsible and who does a really good job and stays on top of the ball, then you could this could benefit your life in any other way that might free you up to do more in your business if that's what you want. So. Yeah, that's so amazing. E, yeah, EA, TC, marketing, and uh, okay. what was the last one? Uh, oh, the ISA uh, worker. The ISA or lead gen or on the phone. So Stephanie, yeah. what have you used VAs for? Um, everything. Um, All of that. Grocery part, but um, thinking of which, don't give me- But you're going to now, aren't you? <laughs> I bet. <laughs> well, um, I actually have used virtual professionals for- transaction management, listing coordinating, marketing, um, operations management as well. You know, if my license ex is expiring, renewing that, scheduling CE classes and the ISA. I mean, we have, I want to say probably one of the best ISAs, um, in my opinion, that Brevy VA has to offer. Nobody could have him. He is mine forever. <laughs> um, and but now we use our, um, our VAs for listings and for ISA. Um, and we were able to grow our business and getting, you know, an EA to kind of leverage more of the operations off of, but 
so far, most of my virtual professionals have done everything. I mean, Christy can be an advocate saying, there is not one task that Stephanie has not had me do because a big part of that was cross training every, everybody just trying to make, you know, leverage off. And there's only so many hours a day. So I've used them for everything. Okay. I have so many questions. Could you mind if we drill down a little bit on this? Yeah, sure. Okay, good. So let's start with TC. I have some limiting beliefs and I want you to poke holes in it. Okay. My limiting beliefs are that a VA could be a good supplement to, you know, a local domestic you know, transaction coordinator, but that they can't actually take it on because, you know, they're not licensed. They don't understand real estate in our area, like our local transaction coordinators do. So poke holes in that and tell me I'm wrong. Okay. Well, so question number one for your TCs, you know, that are local there, are you having them do inspections? Are you having them drop off materials? Are you having them go to do in-person things? Most of the, my agents TCs, I would say the answer is no. Okay. Well, it all comes down to the training number one that you're going to have and what training that you're going to be able to implement to that TC. So for instance, when we have our CEs, Francis is right there doing them with me. She's learning the contract of sale. She's learning the process, but a huge part on having a successful TC is the system that you're going to implement. And that's where we utilize Brivity for our management for our database. And Brivity has a fantastic feature where you can have your transactions and you have these auto plans. And the auto plans that we've designed set specifications on what to do, what's the next steps, when to check things off. We have reminders on there for things that need to be done. So they have a system that they're able to easily follow and understanding the process coincide with good training and also being a part of the agent training. And Christy can attest, I train my VAs no differently than I would train an agent. Yep, that's right. So everything pretty much VR that can be done, um, you know, using a computer, a VA can do that for you. So starting from transactions, listings, marketing, you know, inside sales agent roles, um, a VA can, you know, can work on that. So Christy, if I'm not very process oriented naturally, you know, and I hire, um, you know, a Brevity VA and I say, I want you to do my listing coordination and my TC work. Mm -hmm. Do you guys like, does the VA help form that process or do we have to bring the process to the VA? Uh, that's going to be a case to case basis for me via, um, there are VAs who has, you know, who have extensive, should I say experience prior to being hired by Privity VA who works for, um, probably um, an agent or a team, mm -hmm. um, doing transaction coordination and listing coordination. So they can suggest, um, a process or they can, um, you know, make a suggestion in terms of the tools that can be used. Now, if, because with Brivity VA, we, correct me if I'm wrong, Bryce, we don't hire VAs who doesn't have experience, right? We, yeah. mo mostly they have. Yeah, what our sales guys say is we custom curate uh, this yeah. VA relationship for your exact needs. And what that looks like is figuring out what experience would make this a win. Right. And I think via your fears are probably valid. Um, and I see this a lot. A uh, big reason why some clients fail with their VAs is because they assume because they've got a title VA and they get it from a real estate VA company, the VA is just going to be able to come in and say, great, I'm going to run your TC from contract to close and, and be done. But in reality, that person needs to be trained exactly like Stephanie would train her agents, right? They're people. They're no different. They're highly educated. They're excellent workers. And there's no reason why we can't train them to do anything that we're doing here that you don't need to license for or need to be, be in-house mm -hmm. for. Uh, I like, I love teams who transition into that because that first VA, they leverage out not only to do the transaction work, but to start building the systems and processes. You only need a piece built. Have that VA own that piece until they're really, really good. And then all that's in your head via, great, now VA, this is what needs to happen next. Let's build that in Privity or whatever other system you use, right? So that by the time the VA is running the entire thing, you can start adding other VAs to that team, right? And you have good systems in place. So mm -hmm. yeah, you definitely have to have the systems in place to make that a success. 
Um, and without that, it, 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 it will be, I think what you, what you think field might flop or you'll get into trouble with someone doing something that they shouldn't. So. What's the typical ramp up time, Bryce? If I, if I hire a, you know, VA and I, and I want him to do TC and listing coordination, and I have a general idea of how I like things done, but you yeah, know, whatever, you know, what, what might that first month look like? Oh, that's a good question. And I think I might want Stephanie's input in this as well to see what she sure. did. Um, it, it changes a lot. I think um, it's going to be really high touch in the first 30 days. I think that that first month, a lot of that is getting in front of the VA multiple times a day. Um, I really am a, um, I forgot the word. I, I, I really like advocate proponent. Av- thank you. Yeah. Advocate um, batching and layering tasks. Right. I don't want you to hire a VA. And then here's the thousand things that you got to do to get this done. Let me know when you're done and I'll review it. I want you to say, here's the five things that I really want you to master today, between today and tomorrow. When you're done with those five things, I'm going to review those five things and only spend 15 minutes reviewing it and give you another five things and then review those. Your time, you know, that time commitment is, is smaller in smaller increments than cleaning up a really big mess and thinking that you'd had a really bad hire in the beginning. You just didn't manage that really well, right? So if you get a VA in the door over the first 30, 60 days, you're batching tasks and you're reviewing those and then layering on more tasks. That's an excellent recipe for success for any hire, not only remote workers, right? The communication is key because they're remote, but that would be cause any relationship in your business to be successful, I think. Okay. So Stephanie, like you are a unicorn and that, cause you have a CPA background, right? Um, well, it's CTA, so certified tax assessor. Okay, perfect. Um, you're, you, I have a feeling you're kind of more process oriented than most, the typical agent. <laughs> is that fair? Um, yeah, a little bit, a little bit, not a lot. No, it sounds like you are. I mean, and, and that's a compliment. That's a huge compliment because like I coach and train a lot of agents and I'm like listening to you guys and I'm like, you're like literally assuming that the average agent has a process and a system for this. And that's the fair. average yeah. agent is paying a TC to just take it away. Yeah, that's, and yeah, that's the thing via, I mean, you know, when we're talking about VAs, <clears throat> we're also, and me being here, I can tell everybody all the mistakes that I've made because I have made many of them. Um, even though I'm more of a systems operation type mindset, I'm more, I like to see data. Um, you know, black and white is how I view things. But with that being said, and Christy can attest, when I brought on my VAs, I had no plan. Oh my gosh, I had zero plans. And it was a mess. And Christy and Francis were probably more stressed out than I was. <laughs> of, oh my gosh, what is this woman's expectation? <laughs> and as I've had the VAs and, and Christy has been a huge part of developing and assisting to develop a system in place. And when, I, like I said, I first brought on my VAs, I had no plan and that is the biggest mistake. And not saying that every agent before you hire a VA should have a plan. You have to start from some place. What do you want them to do? What do they need to learn in order to do that specific task? And how are you going to work with them? Not for only the first 30 days, but the first 90 days. So the best thing that we have done is coordinate a launch system. Um, a lot of um, partnering with Place and a lot of the partners have masterminded and gotten great ideas. And this launch was life-changing for myself. During this launch, it's setting a schedule, saying today, this is what you're gonna learn. Having these goals in mind, orchestrating a time block. The first thing is time blocking. We as agents, via you talk about all the time and the best advice to anybody is time block yourself in this industry. Yeah, I have not mastered this. So any master person of time blocking, I would love to speak to you because Me too. That is I do try to difficult. talk to them. <laughs> oh yeah. It is extremely difficult, but you need to set a pace and expectation. And then the, the biggest, most, well, most difficult thing to learn in any job is the priorities and what becomes overwhelming when you have a virtual professional, not for yourself, but for the VA themselves is identifying what is that priority? Because I can turn around to somebody and yell at me, hey, get this done right now. But it's different when you're having a VA. So that's where that expectation, creating expectations, creating a launch system, time blocking their calendar, having videos of the training and the task, 
to really start developing. So before you have a VA, unfortunately, everybody has a lot on their plate. You have to designate some time to organizing and creating this system, even if it's not perfect. What I will tell you, if you're somebody who is like me, who's like, I need somebody now, I need to figure this out. What I did was I had Christy and Francis sit on Zoom with me all day. And we just sat and I shared my screen and I just did tasks. And as I'm doing tasks, I'm delegating the tasks. So they can see and build an understanding of what I'm doing on their end, some expectations from them, and they can see how I'm working throughout the day. And then it, as the VA is learning, and Christy, I've had her do this, and Francis, I have her do this all the time, as I have them share their screen back to me. Okay, you're gonna do this task, let me make sure that you're doing it right. And that's the best way to train because yep. the issue with VAs is they're not sitting right next to you where you can show them on your computer. Now you're creating that and you're overcoming that issue. So first you do it, they watch, then they do it, you watch, and then they do it and come back to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you, you mentioned video. Oh yeah, really quick. You mentioned video library, then, then we'll, then we'll talk about that Bryce. Um, uh, I have for years and years, um, I'm, I've always worked on Macs, and so it's embedded in the Mac. It's called QuickTime, but you can get third party applications if you're on a PC. Uh, anytime I have to do a task, I will screen record and make sure the audio is recording. And I just talk through it because I'm going to do it anyway. And it might take, you know, a minute longer. If I have to talk through it, it might go a little slower. So for instance, it's how all of my agents on my team, uh, me doing CMAs, me uh, talking to clients on Zoom, I would save the Zoom or you know, whatever I was doing, if we were inputting a listing, I'm like, hey, press record and talk through it. Like, you know, don't forget to check this box. It's really easy to miss. And, you know, this particular box is, is a really important one. It, it has legal ramifications. So if you're not sure, be sure to ask on this particular. And, and you go through, and we have a whole video library from like 2015 to 17. Honestly, guys, that's still relevant. It just, it's evergreen content for training, right? And every time I have someone new and we throw it in a Google Drive doc, and, uh, you know, there it is. So if you're going to do the thing anyway, Stephanie, that's what you're kind of, you're saying, share a screen or record the screenshot video and talk your way through it. And then, then you're, then you're permanently, you have a permanent record of it. Right. I agree. Even as you know, if you're thinking, if you're a single agent, you might have a team just taking that extra minute to record what you're doing, creating an offer, going through an attorney review process, how to prepare this, how to prepare that, having it even for yourself, because via unfortunately we all need breaks yeah. we're all going to have to go on vacation one day we're all going to need somebody to manage another task for us and having that library of how to do things is going to be very imperative to your business if you're not there if you need to replace yourself how is somebody going to know what to do or how you like to do things i like to do things a very specific way i follow up with attorneys and you know different transaction parties a very specific way when I have a client, I follow up with the lender in a very specific way. If I leverage that task onto somebody else, they're never going to meet my expectations because they're not going to know how yep. I do it unless I show them how it's done. And by the way, we've naturally started with the who, then we went to the what. We've naturally moved into the how, which is what we're talking about now. And what's interesting, Stephanie, I'm so glad you said that because I literally, now this was before COVID. When I when my team was at its peak, it was kind of like 2015 through 18. So, it, you know, it was before all of that, right? And um, so we were meeting in person. Like if, if we had multiple offers for the most part, the client would come in, but every once in a while we'd have out of town clients. And anytime I had an out of town client, I would take that opportunity to gather agents in my office, put the call on speakerphone and record me. There'd be a video on me talking to the client. And we have three or four videos in our library on this is via presenting multiple offers to a seller. This is via writing an offer with a buyer remote. And that way they could hear. And, and what people would hear, Stephanie, that I didn't hear is I use the same phrases over and over. You don't know what you, you just, you don't know what you say. It's subconscious, right? So they would hear it. And then I would hear them on the phones. And I was like, they sound like me. Like they're, I, like they're explaining that just like, that's well done. Like that's exactly how I explain it. And I realized it's because we had the video library. Yeah. And that's a huge, and we're talking about how 
the video is huge. I am not one who likes video. I don't, I don't know how to work a Zoom background. <clears throat> Told you about the technology, but I'm not, <clears throat> I'm not the best when it comes to video myself, but I still do it because it's there and it's a record. And one thing that any realtor should know, it's how good your record keeping is during transactions. A lot of the time when we're looking at video and just kind of a tidbit for those just in business, regardless of EAs, having a video explaining things to a client helps you and helps leverage your time. So when we're talking about if I'm sending an offer via dot loop or DocuSign, I can send them a video with it. Here's me explaining the offer. Here's me right. explaining what a contract is. Here's me explaining a turn review. And as we work through, so like I mentioned before, we, when we're talking about the how to and you, we utilize Brivity as our main database and the auto plans are just, I should have had that a long time ago. And we leverage these auto plans to include videos of us explaining things to the clients. Hey, we're in a turn review. This is what that means. And all it is a click of a button and the VA just puts in the dates and things just automatically go. And the follow-up and the explanation is there. I had a transaction, little tidbit, with uh, my VA, Francis, and mm -hmm. I, I never communicate with the client. Not once. I did via email for major things. We talked yeah. when I got the listing. It was completely virtual. It was an expired listing. They were not from here. And my auto plan just went through and they were like, Stephanie, you prepared these videos. And Francis was on point with following the auto plan and everything and keeping them mm -hmm. updates, doing end of week updates with them. She managed a hundred percent of that communication with the client. And we've gotten a review that was so fantastic. It was eye watering of how, you know, gracious they were. Well, I love that because not all clients do want to talk on the phone every day. That is more, there is a certain percentage of clients who that is, that's actually better. It's actually yeah. better to, to get written communicate, you know, communication to, um, Christy and Bryce, I'd love you guys to jump in since we're kind of on the how let's talk about yeah. that. Let's talk about how to implement systems and processes and train VAs. What have you seen that's worked well? Well, on the mm. VA's uh, perspective, uh, Vija, uh, since um, Stephanie mentioned about the Loom videos, right, recorded videos, you're doing it yourself. It's very helpful. Um, as we all know, uh, real estate agents, they're super uh, busy taking care of clients, taking care of uh, the follow-ups and all. Uh, these videos will definitely, uh, should I say, personal opinion helps me grow. Um with uh, my VA experience and with Stephanie as well be, uh, before. Um, it helped me a lot in terms of better understanding the business process and um, her goals. So she's just gonna walk through uh, the processes and uh, the importance of you know each step. And it kind of gives me an idea as to how to go about it and um, how to do it the Stephanie way. So it's mm -hmm. very, very helpful. Well, that, I love the way you said that, how to do it the Stephanie way, Stephanie not way. the VA way, <laughs> not the Bryce way, but the Stephanie way. I mean it yeah. like that. That is what agents struggle with the most. You guys with leverage is they struggle with that because what, what they say is, well, no one, no one can do it like me. And, and by the way, that's somewhat true. Everybody, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. You are going to be the best. If all you did was transact your own transactions, you would be the best at your own transaction. My, my, my challenge, the gauntlet I would throw down is, is that how you want to spend your time? Do you ever want to go on vacation to Stephanie's point? Are you really, is that the best use of your time? Right. I, I would argue that what if, what if you're talking to your clients more or future clients more and you let someone do some of the background stuff and you just came in like how Stephanie does it versus how you do it doesn't, doesn't have to be the same. It could be different. Yeah. And the agents are in control of that. Just like you're in control. If you hired someone, they were standing right in front of you. There's no difference. The training required isn't very different either. You know, and, and I, I think when we listen to people like Via and Stephanie, I, I get a little overwhelmed that like, there's no way I'm not ready to have a VA because I need this big process in place. But you just kind of remember with the VA that um, you're, you're kind of by, I'm, I'm kind of um, my, my training a finance guy, but my, my um, initial investment is much smaller than it'd be 
to, uh, to hire someone in-house, right? And so I can mess up a little bit more and not feel like I'm losing quite as much, right? Like I can yeah. be scrappy and I could, the VA is, VAs are really loyal once they're in the door and you treat them really well. And because mm-hmm. of that, let's just, all I need is just one piece of a good system in place. And I'm going to ask the VA to own that. If that's five hours, it takes two hours, great. And then I'm going to inspect that. And a lot of the training for me that works well with VAs is in the inspection, right? Um, you need to make sure that they're doing what, uh, doing exactly what you told them well over and over again, and then move on to a little bit, a little bit bigger of a piece and just take your time. Don't worry about the intensity around hiring someone new and having to have all this crazy stuff in place. Start small. You just need one piece of one good system to get started and then just start layering those one after another. And then you'll be in Stephanie Preeman's shoes in six months. Well, probably six years, but you know, she's back. Yeah. I don't know if any of us are really going to. I don't know. Yeah. Well, maybe we should use Stephanie as an example there. I love how she said, unfortunately, we need to take breaks is what she said earlier. Did you catch that? Not (laughs) unfortunately. I maybe love her even more. I'm not going to lie. (laughs) I'm like, Stephanie. The the VA is like, actually, you know, as I mentioned before, I'm the one who I make a ton of mistakes every day. But I always try to find ways to make it better in the future for myself and for others. Christy, my VA, who I hire just because, holy SHIT, I need extra help. Christy designed all of that. Christy created everything on Trello. Christy was the one, and Francis, who helped develop my auto plans, not me. I just said to them, this is what I want and this is what I'm looking for. And they helped with that. But what I will tell you when I'm talking about my mistake to that is because I I feel with my VAs that because I lacked that upfront expectation and training that they and I have missed out on extra opportunities during the time that I've had them. When we talk about the Halvia and just, you know, diving deep into this training, I mentioned before about having a launch process. What that looks like is creating a perfect week time blocking them, having the training, you can do it in Excel, you can do it in Google, however you are more comfortable, having a list of priorities. What are your priorities week by week over 90 days that you want them to learn and grow and understand the tasks at hand? Having a 30, 60, 90, we talk about doing that with agents. Why don't we do that with our virtual professionals? What do we want them to learn? How can they help our business? And what can we leverage for them as well? You know, what you mentioned with the videos, having a training library of what they want to look for, and then having just a management system. This auto plan goes to here. This auto plan goes to here. This goes here. Showing them a system in place. And, you know, Via, for me to create that, and this is something new that we've implemented, it took me probably four hours at most just to put everything in together. I mean, I've had some pre-planning work with it and the videos of course are gonna take time. We've had it all, but composing everything, it didn't take that long long of a time. And this is able to help our current VAs to take a step back and say, okay, what do I need to learn? What do I need to focus on? It allows me to revisit their job, different tasks that we can leverage and automate. As I mentioned, my auto plans for our transactions and listings, for uh, pendings and listings, we have a ton of communication automated just in brevity alone that the VAs don't have to do. So looking at their job, so even if you have the system, if you have a VA and you don't have a system, start looking at that and revisiting. Or if you don't have a VA and you're starting to think about having a VA or how to build your business, like I said, I've always worked full-time. I've always had full-time production every year that I've been licensed for about 10 years now. And I've been a year and a half as full-time in real estate, which I never thought I was so afraid. I was so afraid of losing stable income, stable health benefits. And that VA was the one thing that changed my life. And the reason is, is because we collaborated together and we built each other up. So if you're a new agent or if you're starting, if you're dual career, if you're thinking about what's that next step for me, the VA was. But get a piece of paper, write all over it, think about what you need, how you're going to organize this. And it's fun. I find the planning fun. But implementing these, implementing a VA to help change your business, change yourself, and help you grow not only as an agent and your business, but as a leader itself. 
Okay, Stephanie, we are so on the same wavelength because I was like, oh, I need to tell everybody the exercise that I go through to come up with job descriptions and tasks. And you literally just did it. And and that is, is I tell everybody, and you know, I'm my world I use Google, you know, apps for everything, right? So it can be on a napkin, it can be on your iPhone notes or your Android notes, it can be on, it doesn't matter. What I do, I do it on Google Sheets and I just start a dump and I say, okay, what are all the things that have to get done? Literally everything from, we have to input listings. We have to, um, you know, create pre-listing packets. We have to, you know, gather them. We have to go on the listing appointment, you know, everything. We have to order a sign up, everything from mundane to the big things, right? And you just start dumping them. It, you'll find 70% of it, you'll do it at once. The, re- the 30%, give yourself a week. And that's why I like my iPhone notes, by the way, because you can kind of add to it. But then don't forget to list things that you that are not getting done that you want done. It's like a wish list, right? Example I give is my friend, Wendy Papazan, runs a, a great team in Texas. And one of the things um, she just does a really great job is they manage the customer experience with white gloves. And, um, and this was again, a little bit before the frenzied market we're in. So this was a couple of years ago, but what they used to do is at the first open house, uh, and I don't know how it was delivered, but the, the seller would get movie tickets and a, Hey, go see a movie on us. Right. Cause we're kicking you out of your house for your open house. And then when they got through, I believe it was their inspection contingency period, or we call it something different here in Washington, they would get Tiff's treats, which is warm cookies delivered to their house. So they would have warm cookies, you know, within the hour of them saying, congratulations, you know, they would kind of time it out. And then the client would get or order their place of work because they would tell everybody, my realtor just sent these. Here's, here's a dozen warm chocolate chip cookies at three o'clock on a Wednesday. Hello, you're the most popular person at work. So mm-hmm. I loved how they managed the client experience. And so I, I add those on my list. Like I want to do that. I aspire to do that, even if I'm not doing that. Right. And you come up with all of your list and then you rank them in order of importance. And then to Bryce's point, you have to chunk them down. You have to say, okay, at the end of the day, I may want cookies delivered, but right now I have to transact transactions right? That's going to be number one. And so to Bryce's point, you you have two options. You can either do it yourself like you're doing anyway, or you can do it yourself while you are training someone else, right? So do what you're going to do anyway and document it and have someone sitting beside you. You don't have to create classroom environment. You don't have to, like, you can do what you were going to do anyway, and then just train someone in the meanwhile. Christy or Bryce, anything you want to add to that? Yeah, well, I think it's excellent and it's super wise. I wish every single client that comes signs up a Brevity VA would, would do that exercise. Uh, and this is where working with a really good service uh, helps a lot, right? Because um, bringing someone on is a bit overwhelming. It's taxing. It takes time. It's one of the, it's one of the most exhausting part of my job just here at Brevity VA, hiring new salespeople or new people. It's just like, it takes a lot, right? And we pair you up with a launch manager and then a success manager like Christy, right? And their role, right? And Christy's entire job is making sure that she knows what success looks like for every single 50 of her clients. And then she calls them twice a month, once a month and says, you told me last month that success looked like this. Did the VA do it? I don't see the VAs doing it, right? When, when a new client starts with her, she calls every two weeks and says, okay, here were the five things that, was gonna, that were gonna make your VA successful. Did they get accomplished and why not or, or why? And if they didn't, Christy's with the VA too. You're not alone, right? Christy's sitting there going, hey, VA, your client said these were the five things that were going to make you successful. Why did it happen? Client saying it didn't happen because of this. Why did it happen on your end? And she's like a facilitator, right? An advocate for the VA and the client until that relationship is really, really successful. Not doing it alone, especially when you're new, um, is, is really, really helpful and takes a lot of weight off your shoulders, which I think what Stephanie was referring to earlier about how Brevity VA stays involved. You have a good service, especially when you're new, it goes a long way. Yeah, I love I think, that. Yeah, I think that's a, uh, that's a big uh, point, Bryce. Um, having, you know, a VA coming from Brevity VA is really huge. Um, I've been getting a lot of, you know, um, emails or inquiries coming from clients wherein asking, how do you, how do you handle VAs? Like, uh, what are the points that we need to, you know, to take note of? And um, the good thing about, having a client success manager is, you know, we are dedicated entirely to 
helping their, you know, help helping these clients reach their goals, providing training, and we manage their VAs in terms of, you know, attendance, performance. Uh, these clients reach out to us. And even, you know, implementing action plans and doing root cause analysis, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. That's that's amazing. I I am, um, by the way, true story. I'm just gonna admit it right here live on the webinar. I am in the middle, I've got ads running, I'm trying to hire an assistant. And I'm literally on my own webinar saying, well, why don't I just get a VA? Like, so Bryce, like afterwards we need to talk. So yeah, I'm like, talk. I mean, I've had a VA over the years. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> I got so excited. My, my AirPod came off. I've had VAs over the year and we have one in for our brokerages, right? As you know, yeah. we have yeah, Anne's Marky. fantastic. No, yeah. we have Anne. Oh, oh Anne, yeah, yeah. actually, you know what? Have I four. shouldn't say that. We have four. Yeah, you have three four. or four. Yeah, you've yeah. hired a couple more. The one that I work directly with is, is Anne Felius. And, gotcha. um, and, and, and they're fantastic. And I don't know why I didn't think about this. You know, I, I, do, yeah. I do know why. In my head, what was stopping me, and I have a feeling if it's in my head, it's in a lot of people's head, is that it, it, I'm remembering that it is a little bit more labor intensive up front. Is that fair mm -hmm. a little bit to say? it might be a little bit more labor intensive up front than if I hired an experienced agent right here in Seattle who, you know, could slide right in and take over. I think that's fair to admit. Yeah. I think it's fair to admit. Um, I think the, and there's two reasons why I would, I would agree with you. The first one being they're, they're remote, but I think it's become more accessible because of COVID we've gotten a little more right. used to doing things remotely. So that's kind of come down a little bit, but remote means just more communication like way more communication to make a working relationship successful. And the second one that we're not talking about is just the cultural differences, including the language differences, right? Mm -hmm. The language is never an issue in my world talking um, to VAs back and forth. Like there's never a communication barrier, but there are barriers um, when it comes to cultural differences. I, I, like, for example, I had a VA quit recently because he just didn't know how to do what we were asking him to do. And he, culturally was really, really challenging for him just to come to us and say, I don't know how to do that. It was easier for him to say, I quit, I give up my job than it was to say, I don't know how to do that. Right. And I know I said I could, but I don't know how. When I was like, why did you just didn't tell me I would have trained you how, right? So there's some cultural differences between how we work and our expectations and, and, um, and you know, international workers in some parts of the world. Uh, and you really have to work hey, Bryce, really hard really, to overcome. Can, can we, can we go over to Christy on that? Christy, how can yeah. we best, you know, that was really um, great that you brought that up. Christy, how can we best uh, honor those cultural differences and work and strive to be better leaders in di of different cultures? Um, for me, to be honest, um, I, I, I take care, I, how I do it is I tend to ask questions. I'm not afraid of asking questions to, to the clients. Um, the reason is because I wanna make sure that we are aligned and we are on the same page all the time because we cannot have that um, disconnect, right? Um, through the process. So asking questions is one. And of course, doing some research. Um, you are working from home, you're online, you have the internet up, you know, do some research mm -hmm. about your clients, their state, because it's it, it's different, right? All of the processes, it's different. So um, that's my take on that. Uh, get a VA who's really uh, going to help you out, um, who's very enthusiastic in terms of learning the culture and who asks questions. That's very important. Mm -hmm. Okay. I love that. Um, let's talk about mistakes, Stephanie. No, because <laughs> you're perfect. Here. You didn't make any. What are the big fails, and you know what can people look out for? What were some of your big fails with BAs? Well, so number one, not <clears throat> not having the system, and not laying out the priorities, and not providing them a time block is number one. Um, number two, my other mistake is not knowing how to train a VA. What I mean by that is <clears throat> training, training itself is difficult, but when you're looking to train a VA, your, your focal point's going to be different. Like I said, they're not, they're not next to you. What would be the best way? What system can you provide them? What leverage can you provide them to help them learn this task? Um, so overall, in terms of training, the other thing is, is not initially identifying the communication method. So what I mean by that? 
a lot of the VAs and Bryce can attest to this is they don't have a cell phone like you and I via. I can't text them. What communication method am I going to utilize? Am I going to say here, okay, I'm using Slack or I'm using Google, Google chat. But if I'm out on the road, it's difficult for me to get on those apps. I'm the type of person I like to pick up the phone and call somebody or send them a quick text message. So not having that initial phone method, we've, we actually use Google Voice. So the VAs now have Google Voice. We did use Ring Central. Um, not like there's anything wrong with either system. We just use Google Voice because it's more cost effective. Um, but that is one thing, if I could have changed that up front with identifying the phones, that would have helped a lot with communication. So those are a few mistakes that I have made that have led to developing a communication point, developing a training system in place, um, developing a resource on their behalf, and also having these communications. Our VAs, we do one-on-ones every Tuesday. Every day at nine o'clock, we have a power up with our team. Our VAs are on there. On Tuesdays are one-on-ones. I do a, a one-on-one with them every week, aside from our communication. And then also, you know, setting up ways of prioritizing and those expectations. So like I said, through the videos, making a perfect week, having things time blocked and utilizing these communications with how can we leverage some tasks that they have. And that's where, you know, Brevity Auto Plans come in. I'm sure there's other systems that agents may use, but that's a system that I know. When we're talking about these mistakes that I've made, we also want to talk about the successes. Yes. I think that is most important <laughs> because I, I'm the type of person where I like to train my VAs as if they're family, number one. Um, you know, my VA, Frances, I know all about her new house, of her better family. Um, she had a baby. I'm, Bryce, if you remember last year, uh, Frances had a baby and, you know, yeah. she only asked for two weeks off. Yeah. And I yeah, said, I said, no, honey, you're getting a month's pay. <laughs> Yeah. And to extend, mm-hmm. I was like, I have Stephanie, no Stephanie, thank you so much for saying that. Thank you. That's awesome. That's amazing. The But exactly. These, we don't see, I mean, and Christy can attest to this. Sometimes being an agent, like it's, we think, and I think Christy mentioned this, you you get treated like you're a computer, that you're a computer program who's just 24 seven on go, on go. And there's no shut off switch. There's no break. There's no life. There's no family. And you see that a lot from clients. And, you know, that's why when I look at my VAs, it's their people, you need time. It is what it is. We, we will figure it out. But I just like that dedication that they have. And as I'm training them, our ISA, Jeff, which nobody can have, I love him to death. And actually, <laughs> let me tell you how we got Jeff from Christy, because last year I needed a project VA. And Christy helped me find somebody because we had to do calls. So, and from learning and training, Jeff has actually landed us a $1.3 million listing. Um, I have a $1.2 million listing that I'm going on tomorrow. And I told Jeff, and this was our conversation, Jeff, I'm tired of doing these little deals right now. I need something else. I think we're ready for that next phase. And how can we break into more of a luxury market? Because we work our butt off with our agents and with our clients. And we do a lot of service for people that you don't see when I look like this, but we work as hard as we can. And we feel we need to up that market. And Jeff has been constantly funneling luxury leads through us. And I get so much feedback from him. So Stephanie, I, can I ask you a couple of questions? I've never used a VA as, as an ISA or OSA. And by the way, for all of our listeners watching, these are sometimes we throw out terms and I feel like I have to be a translator inside sales agent or outside sales agent. So it, ISA would be someone who, if someone registers on your website, they're looking on your IDX feed, they're looking for houses, they would call and say, Hey, we see you registered, or we see that you've been looking, you know, they're, they're taking in, in side leads that are coming in and OSA is cold calling. They're either calling circle prospecting, expireds, FISBOs, you name it, and trying to nurture and set up appointments. Um, my question is, is that what you have them do? What do you have your ISA slash OSA? Wh- who actually are they calling, Stephanie? 
Well, they're calling everybody. And so they call the people who register in if we can't get to it in time. And then they also have a goal. So we establish a goal of who they're calling with our perfect week, expires for sub by owners, GAD based, this or that, whatever is assigned. They have a goal of how many calls they need to make on a day, daily and weekly basis. And they have a goal of appointments that they need to set up for us that are in person. When we were in COVID time, it was phone call or Zoom. Now we wanna capture all in person um, or some phone calls depending on the particular lead, but it's always to be passed on. He manages the follow-up. Um, you know, we're getting so many leads coming in and I'm going on so many appointments and training our agents and everything else. So Jeff is working that follow-up. He, what we've identified actually have increased his performance in terms of basically just managing leads and being a director of sales opportunity almost in terms of managing our leads coming in and managing the leads our agents have and focusing on our end of year goal and saying what we need to do to make that goal happen. And he's the one who's learned now with good training to identify what our team needs, who we need to be calling, what we need to be saying, practicing scripts, um, you know, different and working on new pitches. We mastermind with new pitches all the time. And by doing that helps me as Jeff asks questions and also helps him and helps our agents. I was mentioning to Bryce, Jeff knows about 1031 exchanges. He knows about capital gains. You know, these are things that he is learning and he's able to communicate that with clients. But um, little disclaimer, please be mindful in your state what your ISA or OSA can be saying to the customer on the other phone. In the state of New Jersey, we are not allowed to disclose price or value. The ISA is not, or OSA is not allowed to disclose that. If you're using an OSA in the state of New Jersey, they cannot disclose the price of a listing unless they are licensed. So just be mindful of that so nobody gets in trouble. Yeah, thank you for, for that. Um, uh, I was going to say the same thing. And every state has laws published, you know, in, in uh, we're a um, statutory state here in Washington state. So ours are in the revised code of Washington for any of our locals here. And every, every state's different. But since I'm licensed in Washington, I'm probably held to a higher standard here and should probably mention the RCW. Uh, Bryce, Christy, and Stephanie, uh, we have a few minutes left. Any, any last words? Is there anything I didn't ask you that I should have? Is there anything you had on your notes that you really wanted to share and you didn't get a chance to share? Christy, let's start with you. Sure. Um, actually, uh, this was what Stephanie discussed, um, the mistakes made since I was actually part of her team before. <laughs> I think through the mistakes that, you know, that, that were made before, Stephanie learned how to ace it. That's why she's doing a really great job. She mentioned develop systems in place, which is very important, doing trainings, you know, creating timeline, time blocks, setting up setting up expectations with your VAs and discussing the goals and targets. Your VA should be highly involved with the goals and targets of the team for it to work. So I think that's one of the uh, key points or pointers that, that you know, clients who's um, thinking of hiring VA should, uh, should keep, in, keep in mind. So, yeah. Yeah, love that. Stephanie, anything that you didn't get to say that you wish you would have? Um, I think we've, I've covered most of it, just more an implementation, set goals, have these people be a part of your family, you know, your business, I treat my business as they're my family, do the same with them, um, involve them, you know, via my team watches your Wednesday webinars, my VAs watch them. I make oh, them wow. a part of our training so they can learn and see what we're doing because when we're a family and we're this team together, we want to all be learning different things so we have more to bring to the table. So if I'm watching one of your webinars, I'm going to have a different takeaway than maybe Christy would. And I would love to learn her takeaway because any training that you do, I always say it's worth your time if you're going to be able to learn one thing. And after that training, what can you implement today that will change your business tomorrow? So that's one thing, you know, with what we do with our VAs. Thank you so much. That is, that's amazing. That's so awesome to hear that you, that you watch these as a team. Thanks for saying that. Bryce, you get the last words, my friend. Last word. I think I just want to reiterate what Stephanie's saying about the trust. You know, build, build trust with these folks. Um, they're amazing humans. They're amazing people. They're incredibly intelligent um, and they do an amazing job. Build that trust and pull them into your family and you'll, and, and they'll be really loyal to you and you'll see really, really great results. Uh, 
start with one system and don't do it alone. Come talk to me. I'm happy via if you text out my cell phone number to everyone. Text me if you're thinking about a VA. I'm happy to have that conversation with any of you. You don't have to sign up for our services. Just come learn, come talk. Happy to chat through what it looks like for you specifically and your team and answer your specific questions. I, I love, love that. It. And it's so. brivityva.com. So B-R-I-V-I-T-Y-V-A.com. Yeah, okay. there's a little button up top. We got a really basic website. Just request a consultation and, and we have a okay. team that consults with you and chats about your specific needs. It's really helpful. A really good one. All right. Well, thank yeah. you guys so, so much. I Popular demand. Those are always the best ones where, you know, our viewers and our listeners really want content. And I personally... Um, I, this is huge for me. It, it, it's going to solve a really huge problem. If by the time this airs, I probably will have a VA. Oh, it's live. Hey. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. All right, everybody. Have a good week. We'll talk to you next Wednesday. Have a good week. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Via. Bye, Stephanie. Bye, Christy. Bye.